and the recording has started. So, so greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome to the February webinar of ISPI Texas. I have uh, uh, I've got uh, our website up on the screen here to show you where you can go to find out a little bit more about us. Uh, we are the statewide chapter for Texas of the International Society for Performance Improvement. And uh, what we do, we, are, we serve uh, the entire state of Texas, um, call ourselves a big chapter for a big state. Uh, we hold these monthly uh, webinars uh, to talk about topics around human performance technology. And then we have uh, in-person events to supplement that. And we support the larger organization, which is the International Society itself based out of DC. Uh, and uh, they have our 2017 Performance Improvement Conference coming up in Montreal at the end of April. So uh, make sure you check that out. Uh, so if you go to ISPITX.org, you can find out more about us. Um, we also have uh, meetup groups. Uh, so we've got a meetup group in Austin, Dallas, and San Antonio. Uh, so if you uh, want to participate in some of the in-person happy hours, uh, please go to your local meetup group to find out more. Uh, we also have our group on LinkedIn. So the ISPI Texas group, um, we'd invite you to join in the discussions there. So um, for today, and Kirby, I'll, uh, why don't you go ahead and take back uh, control and call up your presentation. Okay. So um, we're, we're about to get into the meat of the presentation. From a protocol perspective, looks like we've got about 10 participants. Um, we'll probably have a few more stragglers come in. I think we're, we're small enough that as we go, um, if you'd like to ask a question, uh, you can unmute yourself and, uh, and just kind of chime in and we'll play it by ear from that. Uh, you're also welcome to go ahead and just type a question in the message box. Uh, I'll be monitoring that uh, as we go. And uh, Kirby Hicks will be our presenter today. He's got uh, his, the presentation up on the desktop. Um, our topic for today is collaborative work management and human performance technology. Um, I'm going to say a few words and then turn it over to Kirby. Uh, Kirby, if you could go to the next slide for me, please. So some of you may not be familiar with the term human performance technology. Uh, if you go to the ISPI Texas website, then you, you can see this in more detail. But really, HPT, it's the system, systematic and systemic identification and removal of barriers to individual and organizational performance. And uh, there's, there's 10 principles involved with that. Four are the first four principles of human performance technology. And really, from an HPT practitioner perspective, uh, these are kind of the, the things that anchor us. And, and first is that we focus on outcomes. So we're all about getting business results. We take a systems view where we look at the, the interconnected complex of functionality and related components in an organization. Uh, we want to add value, that is get those desired business outcomes, and we establish partners, partnerships. So that's a collaborative effort uh, with the relevant stakeholders. Um, and collaborative work management software really, uh, really promotes and actively supports our efforts in the realm of human performance technology. Uh, and, and so I'm really excited to have Kirby speak to that today. And Kirby, if you can go to the next slide. So I, I told you there were 10, uh, 10 tenants, uh, 10 standards, and uh, the four principles are followed by uh, the six systematic processes. So um, what we say for good human performance technology implementations that we ought to be systematic in the way that we do these things. The assessment, the analysis of the work, the design of the solution, the development of the solution, the implementation, and the evaluation. And um, Kirby's going to speak to uh, some specific case studies, but collaborative work management software, um, I know from a CONFO perspective, has helped us to, to take this approach um, and so I think it's very relevant for HPT practitioners. 
So with that, I'm going to I'm going to turn it over to Kirby Hicks. Uh, he's the CEO of Confo Incorporated, and I will let him give you his background and and give you a little more in depth analysis of how CWM fits in with HPT. Thank you, Kirby. Okay, thank you, Mike. And uh, it's my pleasure to be here today to discuss some of our experience with CWM. But before I get into that, I, I wanted to circle back to a bit of a summary of HPT. The, the summary actually is a summary of what our business has been doing for companies uh, since we founded the company back in 2002. My background specifically is from the areas of knowledge highlighted by the authors at the bottom of the screen. So Gary Rummler, uh, White Space Management, uh, Roger Kaufman, the, the synthesizing of how you use all of the tools to look across organizations in order to uh, bring positive results along with the six principles that Mike just talked about. Uh, so my background in Six Sigma uh, coupled very nicely with administrative business process excellence as outlined by Gary Rumler. We've been using those principles in what we do uh, for many years and took our company external in order to do that uh, as a consulting practice in 2002. And so when you look at CWM, which we'll talk about in a moment, CWM does not exist in a vacuum. It requires the more holistic environmental perspective on how you implement it in order to be successful. Technology in HPT does not mean software, but CWM has been latched onto by the software community uh, and that does mean software. And I, I like the cartoon. Because the cartoon almost implies that we all work in the same place. The reality is a lot of us, whether we wanted to have direct contact or not, do not get the opportunity to do so because our workforces are distributed all over uh, uh, geographically dispersed region. And that makes the CWM software even more of a necessity uh, today than, than ever. Now, CONFO got started in CWM before there was an acronym for it and before there were specific software tools designed to help organizations uh, achieve some of the uh, uh, opportunities to streamline and and uh, improve workflows that are out there today. The, the CWM software environment is actually a pretty growing field of providers. It's getting fairly crowded. So I thought I would put up this Forrester Wave uh, view of some of the players in that space. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, uh, they're listed over in the right side and also in the summary uh, of the text for the Forrester Wave. Um, if anybody wanted to have a copy of this report, we can certainly send that to you. But the, the point of this slide is we're going to talk about applications, and today specifically we're going to talk about Smartsheet and how CONFO has come to embrace that as one of our primary tools for CWM. We all probably have uh, an innate understanding of why you need to collaborate. That's really not the point of CWM. The point of CWM is we're looking to address some specific gaps in, uh, that have been quantified here, are some examples across our organization. Today, the examples I'm going to talk about are for fairly large enterprise implementations of CWM to achieve specific goals. You know, I don't, I don't think CWM has to be cloud-based. We've We've actually managed some complex implementations where it's internal to the client. However, the direction of software today and the fact that uh, cloud-based systems are able to reach across many 
different applications and enterprise applications in the organization makes that something that uh, I think is fairly attractive. We've addressed many challenges, uh, a lot of different kinds of challenges in our time with CONFO since 2002. Some of the kinds of things that we address are, are highlighted above on this slide. And, and it's, it's very common that there's a lot of tasks that get done in an organization that aren't tracked for accountability and it's very difficult to do that across organizational boundaries. Um, and so what we'll talk about are, are three case studies that um, illustrate that for you here in just a moment. But before we do that, one of my observations is that uh, collaborative workflow management software automatically increases the level of play in an organization. And that's primarily because in order to implement it, you have to do some business process reengineering or at least codify the process for doing work in some detail before you can actually implement uh, the software. I know the, the cartoon's a little bit tongue-in-cheek. And, you know, most everybody has some knowledge that they're going to share. Where we see breakthroughs is when you have cross-functional workflows that help move knowledge from one silo to another. And so people in the silo may not be intentionally hoarding their knowledge, but they can't share it with uh, adjacent organizations very effectively. Okay, so we have a lot of case studies, but I wanted to take the three that I'm showing on the uh, the, uh, the Skype meeting now for a specific reason. The, uh, the first two are massively complex collaboration projects. And the first one was really the genesis of our business was looking at these massively complex capital equipment installation projects in the semiconductor industry. The, the second one, uh, Dell, was a custom software implementation to improve uh, and make their global command centers uh, software scalable. And the third one is the one that I will uh, that these lead us to, and that is the Genesis ATS project where Smartsheet was used to deliver some results uh, very quickly uh, that uh, really was based upon what we had learned on the, the larger projects. Let me describe the, the semiconductor kind of project environment a little bit for you. The, the projects where we install capital equipment in, in client wafer fabs and even manage the in-client wafer fab's ability to install equipment is very complicated and we created a collaborative environment for that by actually linking into an industrial strength project engine. We use a, a, a tool called Primavera. Microsoft Project Server is very similar. And the project would have individual activities broken down into parts of days so a lot of activities per project and thousands of projects per year. Our goal was to have reliable, fresh data around the status of all that work so that we could effectively allocate resources to do the work all around the world. Uh, that was accomplished through the project environment with this web portal. If we had smart sheets in the early days, we would have definitely utilized it uh, to help us with the structured communication or decentralized communication of resource uh, assignments back into the project environment in the PMO that ran the centralized operations. Today, we do exactly that. And so 
we have Smartsheet as a CWM tool interfacing with Primavera, the project scheduling engine, and we can take status from all of the engineers around the world through our portal into the schedules, and we can update the resource assignments based upon the constantly changing environment that we're managing in near real time. And because we're doing it this way, we have valid data, and we can use that information in reports in order to manage and control the kind of outcomes that we want to see happen. Today, we're using Microsoft Power BI to accomplish that, and the ability to report on what is going on across all of these environments is a key component of improving uh, the performance uh, that we're trying to achieve. So KPIs in the organization and analytics about problem areas that you may be facing. So the integration of Smartsheet to this very complex environment allows us to achieve control of critical chain kind of feed-in processes that we, in the past, had very little control over. Now, when we look at Dale as an example case study, what we are looking at in Dale is that we had the ability, and this is five years ago now, to accomplish some real-time scalable management of uh, all the transactions that Dell manages worldwide. And so an example of that is wherever there's a problem, they have to dispatch a third-party engineer to go solve the problem and have a part arrive at the same time. They were growing so large that their systems couldn't manage that effectively. So we put in place complex event complex event processing engine that allows us to monitor data in motion rather than data in a data warehouse or data that's not in motion. And it was tied to the workflow, which was uh, captured in BPM notation software. So that's a custom uh, implementation of workflow. What we found from this is that we we're able to dramatically streamline uh, the way that the command sitters are able to home in on what's taking place uh, with dispatches for problem resolution on an exception basis. The key to that is, is that in this workflow, which is the process map on the bottom of this screen, um, you're always able to audit each individual dispatch no matter what country, what language, what third-party provider, what customer, and have a complete audit trail of what's taking place in a heat map environment, and that gets raised up through the dashboard reporting systems that we put in place, such that it's easier to uh, resolve issues or even prevent issues when you're having thousands of transactions per day. So very massively complex implementation for Dell. Now, why, what, what are the takeaways from those two implementations before I go into a smart sheet implementation uh, from Dell? Uh, very successful project, partnering with a very large, capable software company. Uh, to put enterprise capabilities in place. It didn't work so well when that company changed its strategy and divested itself of some of the key components uh, of that software model, notably the business process management piece, BPM notation piece that I spoke of. So you have a great solution, but then because of the change in strategy of one of the providers, it goes away. With the semiconductor environment, you have massive complexity in a project engine, but you 
still don't have all the collaboration that you would like to have to actually help people work together to assign resources. Smartsheet, it turns out, gives us a lot of those capabilities and it's not going to go away. It is in the cloud and it provides us with everything from a simple checklist like what I have on the screen now to a fully capable project environment up to you know the limits of what most people would do with project tools. And so I'm showing you on the screen right now is just an example of the fact that when we do engagements as Confo, we actually use smart sheets to help manage the engagement and it makes it easier for us to keep track with our customers all of the information that we need to manage collectively. And so you can keep your notes and comments back and forth with each other inside of Smartsheet. You can attach files to individual activities or tasks. And the nice thing about it is it looks an awful lot like a spreadsheet. So underneath that spreadsheet is a lot more capability. Hey Kirby, I wanted to, to jump in and just ask a question. Um, can you hear me? Yes. So um, one of the things that, that, that may be interesting to them is can you kind of speak to the difference in cost and implementation cycle time between then and now? So in other words, uh, cl the cloud-based smart sheet implementation and cost versus custom at Dell and kind of the suite at, uh, at the semiconductor industry. Sure, sure. And you know, my understanding was I could just kind of go through these and handle questions at the end, but, you know, we have such a small group of people, I think a dozen or so. If somebody else wants to pipe in, I'll pause periodically so that they can do that. So to answer your question, Mike, um, the Dell implementation was a multi-million dollar project. Uh, so you're looking at $10 million to uh, go through the process of conceiving, structuring, building, and putting this in place for all of their global command centers worldwide. Takes about took about six months for the first implementation to go live, and then the others came on, came came online more quickly. Uh, when you look at the semiconductor environment, standing up that project environment for an individual customer is a big undertaking because of all of the uh, information that has to be loaded primarily. Um, and it is quite expensive as well. Uh, compared to a uh, smart sheet that's available to just about everyone uh, at a negligible cost. And so uh, what is negligible? Uh, for a, a typical company, you're going to maybe spend well, a small to medium business, if you only have uh, a, a project office with a half a dozen people in it, it may be that you only have a license for each of those individuals because Smartsheet allows you to share and collaborate with everyone else in the organization as well as external sites. Um, specific cost around that, I guess we could talk about later, but it's thousands, not millions. And, and not a lot of, at that. So does that answer your question, Mike? Yeah, but I know this slide you're going to talk about how quickly a solution was implemented, so I'll shut up now. <laughs> well, if I forget to mention it, you just let me know. Uh, so with, with this particular client, we spent uh, about five weeks with business process design uh, investigation understanding the flow of work and eliminating, and I, I spared you the agony of looking at all of those process flows uh, and just showed you the kind of finished product here. Uh, and then a uh, short pilot of about four weeks and then complete cut over to Smartsheet. So very rapid, that would be my dog. Hold on. Apologize for that. So in this case, what you what you see here is a diagram that says Smartsheet replaces a massive Excel file that's 
notes uh, on SharePoint that everybody periodically goes in and updates and sends a lot of emails back and forth uh, to coordinate what's going on. Working with their partner to put in uh, distributed wireless access points, point of sale systems, and all the infrastructure associated in it in grocery stores where there's hundreds of these stores that are being set up and renovated over a short period of time, the end-to-end -end process is managed by inputs from their partner customer, Verizon, automatically into the Smartsheet environment. And then out of that, the ability to manage activities across each and every site relative to the engineering work that needs to be done, the movement of material through a warehouse, the assignment of techs in the field to do the work, and again, third-party techs that aren't even part of the uh, company that is delivering the capability. With reports that go specifically to individuals that allow them to update and interact without having to see all of the information at once. This dramatically streamlined uh, the situation for this one customer. They reduced the process steps in the workflow itself before automation by about 30% and eliminated 400 plus emails per week uh, to, any, to each individual project manager that went toward coordination of this activity. So it was a tremendous uh, improvement uh, for this company and it was accomplished in a very short period of time because that time to put it in place dramatically reduces the cost uh, of the inefficiencies that were ongoing at the time. So uh, that's the cycle time comment that I was going to make. I'm not sure that's the one you were looking for, Mike, but... Yeah. Okay. So, the, the larger case studies taught us how valuable it is to have collaborative work management capability and led us to the conclusion that having a, uh, a solution provider that's available in the cloud that has the depth of capability as Smartsheet is one of our uh, cornerstones for numerous of our engaged customer engagements. The, the Smartsheet environment itself uh, provides a lot of views and capabilities that I won't go through all of them here today. But, you know, a standard Gantt chart, Boolean indicators to show you just the status, visual status of red, yellow, green, and so on. So things that you'd be used to. The ability to link uh, activities, dependent activities together so that you can drive uh, the overall forecast for the the, the project and so on, it's resident in Smartsheet. But it's a whole lot more than just a project management tool because it helps you with the collaboration part. So if you have Microsoft Project on the desktop, or even if you have Microsoft Project Server or more powerful tools uh, that are meant for the enterprise, they still don't make it as easy for individual workers to collaborate as Smartsheet itself. And so this, this slide kind of lays that out. You have the spreadsheet views, reports, and uh, capabilities in Smartsheet. You can bring it up another level and do resource management and Gantt charts in Smartsheet. And these capabilities are all linked with each other, as well as the ability to uh, attach files and have discussions at the project level with others in the organization. So for us, one of our holy grails is always get emails out of the picture. They're not auditable, they're hard to find, uh, they take a lot of time to read, so email reduction is a big goal that usually pays dividends and overall process optimization, and uh, the collaboration itself allows people to work together better. All right, that's what I had to show. Um, basically, uh, I would like to summarize with this slide, 
and that is, is that uh, the CWM market is growing. It's great to have uh, the kind of advances in software uh, from a consulting standpoint that we're seeing here. We like Smartsheet a lot, and it's moved up in the Forrester way. Uh, it's a leader. Um, Mike made the point with me, and I agree, that when you implement it correctly, uh, CWM directly supports the 10 standards from uh, human performance technology. And from our engagement process with customers, or if you implement this yourself, all effective implementations will require you to do some process optimization before implementing, and then the continuous improvement process that is derived from having a history of work in this workflow environment kicks in. So continuous improvement reduces the amount of time it takes to get the job done. So we've been using this since 2014 across a, a wide range of industries and customers and use cases. We actually started using it when it was first introduced, which would have been, I'm trying to think, Mike, 2008 with uh, expansion. Uh, it wasn't as capable then, but we've used it along the way, and it has become more and more capable to the point that now we use it uh, uh, in a lot of our customer engagements. And we'd be happy to explore that with anybody who's on the phone or answer questions about that. Uh, and I guess that's uh, where we're at right now. If anybody has any questions, please take your phone off mute and let's, let's talk. So, so Kirby, we, we gave examples, um, you know, uh, primarily around uh, a lot of project environment and automating workflows, uh, you know, kind of the high tech arena. Uh, but there's there's probably other ways to to to, to take advantage of this, and I, I don't know if you had any thoughts on, um, you know, other departments or I'm putting you on the spot, but but kind of how you'd use this uh, in maybe a non-project implementation department or in a, you know, just a, a marketing department or anything like that? Well, you know, I, I tend to think about collaborative workflow in a cross-functional sense, Mike, and when you look at, uh, say, in a marketing environment, new product development environment, there are certain steps uh, and toll gates that uh, any individual uh, marketing requirement needs to meet or go through, and so having an activity list that contains those steps and you can assign resources to as a checklist is a, a very easy uh, step for someone who's just getting started. Uh, likewise, if you, if you have a, a routine uh, requirement in human resources where you're following up on uh, uh, things on a regular basis, Again, a check sheet would be, be very helpful, and that would allow you to coordinate those requirements out in the various departments and interact with those departments without having to send emails back and forth to coordinate. So I have a, I have a question for the group. Um, so is there, uh, is there anyone on, on the call that in their work environment um, thinks that they don't have enough email traffic. Clearly a rhetorical question. I got it, yeah. But, but uh, I, so from the standpoint of, of, of being able to, to collaborate better without a bunch of emails and a bunch of meetings, I, I think that re resonates with folks. Um, anybody have a different approach that they've seen to, that's really made a difference or, or any other comments? Okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to stop recording now.